Hi guys, this is Ellery here, and a couple of you have asked a bunch of questions on my initial videos where I was controlling my home with my voice. So I thought I'd go over, it, not not in a lot of detail of how my house is set up, but just kind of show you how it's modeled in Premise Builder. And you really go watch the the four videos on how to set up premise otherwise you may not understand everything I'm showing you here but so I've already lo logged on to my house here and so you can see for the living room every every object has this voice expression property I've I've gone and added so that's actually an extension of the room location class and I think I also of the tag class but at, at any rate you notice the little pipe icon so those are ors and regular expressions so so this voice expression for this room is really just a a regular expression kind of hover over it and you can read that down below too let me make that a little bigger so i can actually say great room i could say living or living room or great room without a space i don't know how you'd say that <laughs> actually it's just great room <laughs> but anyway so all that's possible and no matter where that's at in the sentence i was speaking my speech parser module is able to figure out what room it is using again using regular expressions right and so once it finds a location match it goes and looks at the sentence again and looks to try to figure out what type of object you're trying to control and so if I say something like set the great room brightness to 40%, right? So I said the word brightness, so it's going to infer that I'm talking about a light object. So it'll go find all the lights. Didn't mean to do that. In, in the living room. And I'll go ahead and set the brightness property to the correct value. So... Let me, you got my smartphone out. Let me go ahead and do a quick example for you. Oh, just lost my connection to my server. Let me, I'm going to pause this and then I'm going to check my VPN. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back now. Sorry about that. Let me go ahead and. Log back into my server. Yeah, I'm right now I'm actually in a hotel, so <laughs> I had to go retype my password for the next 24 hours. The, the internet connection timed out on me. So I'm actually connected to a VPN to my house, so. All right. So I'll go back to where I was here. So we were, we were talking about the speech parser module here. So, yep, so this voice expression property and you'll notice that guy gets carried over to any type of object. And so if you wanted to just control this light by itself, you could type some specific name or nomenclature in here. And then make sure you say that in your sentence. And it'll go through and, and I'll find this light for you. And then i will figure out what properties you were saying from your sentence. So I'll do a quick example for you here. Turn on the living room light. Living room light is already on. Living room table light is on. Okay, so that was pretty stupid of me. Yeah, the living room light's already on, so we're going to tell it to, to go off. Turn off the living room light. Living room light is off. Living room table light is off. So hopefully you can hear the, the feedback from my cell phone there. But anyways, you saw this light over here, the power state went off. And again, that's using this speech parser module. So here's actually just the home level objects. And this is basically just for debugging, but it kind of shows you what, what object types it found based on the sentence and then what the, the property name and the property value that you wanted 
from the sentence how it interpreted the sentence and then it creates these little sentence objects so i had to write code to actually build all this within premise and so that code just kind of is actually two modules so the voice expression and this is where i extend the premise classes right so i extend the location and the tag class to have these voice expression names and also for media content i had to extend media folder and content classes to have these extra user definable searches and those were for albums that didn't didn't have a name that was easy <laughs> that was not always interpreted the same way between like the Alexa and OK Google now. But anyways, or OK Google, but you get the idea. And then the speech parser module that's doing all the work is this guy. And so there's a bunch of global scripts here to get like the object type, the property name and value, the location, and then actually to process the object and create the response. So you can see probably there's several, probably a couple thousand lines of code if you click on each little script in here and add it all together. But it's, it works really well. I've been really impressed with, with how well the G Google Now's working. The Alexa is pretty good too, and I still use that quite a bit when I don't have my watch on or something. So anyways, back to back to my house here. So I kind of give you an example. It's just a pretty simple one. So you see each room's modeled and then it, each lot of my rooms will have a motion detector in it. This that doubles as a security sensor too. And so premise is able to communicate with my security system which is up here. It has a bunch of, you know, a ton of zones. Because <laughs> I also have door sensors on most of my doors. That way, the instant you start to open a door, right, these little occupancy timers can start. And you see, and a lot of these are Z-Wave devices, too, like the ceiling fan. So one thing in premise, if you hold down the control key and you left-click on something it'll take you right to it. Probably should have shown you that in the scripting video, but <laughs> now you know. So this is actually using the Z-Wave module that me and 123 and Mark H created. And so that's published on what used to be code.google.com, but my understanding is they got rid of that repository. So now it's read-only, so you ought to be able to download that. That still using the links from the premise wiki on Cocoon Tech. But anyways, so this will actually automatically import all the lights in your house. And then it will automatically add all these devices as it finds stuff. So it's a pretty, pretty neat thing. And this is using the VRC0P by Leventon. So that's a serial based, you know, RS-232 Z-Wave controller. So this, so this is a pretty handy device. And I have a bunch of other stuff in here. Cell phones. I can't really click on that because <laughs> then you guys can see my cell phone number. But what that is is a tasker module I designed for premise. I can show you the back end, of the, some of the actual code here. So there's this tasker module. So it'll, it has different classes to kind of model just where your cell phone is, what towers it's connected to, and also all the different properties, right? Because you can get temperature from a cell phone, pressure, humidity. So if you were to go click on a, a cell phone under the, that this device object, cell phones, then you could see my phone number. So I'm not even gonna expand that, but anyway. So then I also have like my preamp here and I got two zones I'm using. And so how those work and go down to master bedroom. So this would be zone four. So you notice I have a receiver here. It's actually bound to zone four of this Marantz preamp. 
So you can see you can handle multiple zones. And so I can be watching something in the master bedroom and my my makeshift theater at the same time. I can join something that's, you know, being watched in there or I can watch something totally different. So it's kind of like a matrix switch. It's pretty cool for, you know, what you can get these for. I mean, you're talking under a thousand dollars. Of course, not all those zones have video, but that's that's the drawback. I think only two of the zones give you HDMI out. And so you guys can see down here. Yep. And so that's kind of what tracks if 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 I leave the house. So if I were to leave the house, it'll. And and my wife has also left the house it'll go ahead and arm the system and everything so that's kind of cool and that's actually bound to a home this little device object underneath that tasker module that i can't show you since you'll see my phone number but this is pretty cool too oh that's not my phone number there but that's someone else's <laughs> so i'll go ahead and show you that but so this is a little OBI 110 so it lets me use Google Voice with my house basically you just hook this guy up to an Ethernet jack and your phones through the PSTN connections and and you'll have like free home phone service if you're in the US I don't know I don't think it works in Canada and other places unfortunately but so what that allows me to do is actually so go into the coding module here is to flash something up using this message title and and me message body properties and toggle send message true and it would actually flash up in Cody's display so then there's the media library here and if I click on that since I'm remote it's going to take a while to load because it's got thousands of objects under <laughs> under the content object you can see it receiving them down there so wait a second there it goes so there's this is all actually all automatically imported by this Cody object and this Cody device object so you can have as many of these as you want in your house you would go custom devices and you would click Cody and then you'd tell premise how to talk to your Cody module and then once you have that all working, then you just click import all down here and it'll just import your entire library into premise. And so my home automation system actually has a complete, you know, copy of a lot of the metadata for all the various movies and the file locations and that sort of thing. So you see over here it has fan art folder location so that allows it to show up in automation browser and it also allows it to to go through these and let me go back and actually recurse all these media content objects when I'm requesting something with my voice until it finds a match and then actually it'll set that match to whatever media zone right that this Cody box is in so this this is the one Cody box I have set up right now so you see I got them set up in the living room so I'll go show you that real quick so you see there's a Cody there and you see those bound object again hold control and left click twice and it goes right to it and there's Cody under devices so we can actually play with that for a minute So I'm going to issue a voice command and then you'll see this content over here change and then the play mode will get set and then it should start playing. Play album 21 in the living room. Album 21 is playing in the living room. Yep, and hopefully you guys saw that. So this play mode changed and the TV automatically came on and the premise made sure it was set to the Cody's input which is on HDMI 2 and it started playing so right now in my house I got that playing 
So that's pretty cool, and you can go verify that too. I'll show you that real quick. So this is through a VPN connection, so that's pretty secure. Let's see here, so we're in the living room. And you can see it's playing album 21. So it looks like my wife has the TV muted, so I can unmute that just by going up on volume or just toggle that. And then you can click next button here and it'll go automatically to the next track. And you don't have to use your voice to do that. You could, you could tell it to play the next, next track in the living room. Then it would go through and it would see, there's this Cody box here that has transport commands. And next is one of those transport commands that it can do. And you see those right here. You see like, well, step forward, but the way you, the, the scripts I had to write for the speech parser module actually has to do some interpretation. But so it would go in and hit the next step forward button when I tell it that. And then it would automatically go start playing the next track. So that's the idea. And obviously it does movies. And so you notice I did say play album. So for music, I got this little media type album or song so you'd say play song and it would still work or you can say play album it'll still work same thing with movies just movie is what that one is so these are actually regular expressions so you can get real complicated with these and then after that the script they doesn't have to do much work so it'll just go through it finds this album 21 and it It'll start playing it. All right. Well, I think that's a pretty good overview. I mean, there's a lot of other neat things I'm doing. In my house is kind of weird. Like I got a little this W800 RF32 is an X10 security RF sensor. So I put one of these on my mailbox to so I know when mail's been delivered. Then I got one on my table saw, so I know when the table saw is turned on using a little solid state CT device, it'll sense the current and then it'll turn on the dust collector. So you can do neat stuff like that. And then, what, so for example, in the mailbox, when this happens, it automatically will send me a text and go pop something up in Cody, or it can do whatever you want. I mean, but hopefully you guys get the idea. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this video and hope you guys enjoyed it.